It's a story dominating headlines in Canada. The Trudeau government finding itself in crisis mode over this SNC-Lavalin scandal. Bombshell testimony on Wednesday from Canada's former Attorney General Jody Wilson-Raybould that she was targeted by political interference over about four months in what she considered to be a coordinated and sustained effort by almost a dozen people, key advisors in the Liberal government, to get Quebec company SNC-Lavalin a better deal on a legal case that it faces. For more on this, we've got the NDP's justice critic and the vice chair of the Justice Committee that heard from Jody Wilson-Raybould, Murray Rankin, coming to us today from Ottawa. Murray, always good to have you with us. Thank you for this. Thank you, Todd. You know, I heard during the testimony as you opened up your comments, you talked about how as a lawyer you were very disturbed and very shaken by what Jody Wilson-Raybould had to say. Uh, we know there's a debate coming up in the House of Commons in about two hours from now, less than. You're going to be a part of that, no doubt. What do Canadians need to know here? They need to know that there is a good reason to believe that at the highest level of our government, there has been an effort to politically interfere with the independent decision of an attorney general. We live in a country, Todd, as you well know, where the rule of law means something, where we say we have certain people who decide ultimately whether people are charged or not with, with crimes. And it was her decision, after getting the final decision initially of the, uh, the, the initial decision of the Director of Public Prosecutions, it was Jody Wilson-Raybo's decision that they would proceed with criminal charges against this company. And after she made her decision abundantly clear, we had just absolute sustained systemic pressure for her to change her mind. And that was done at the highest political level. And if you're to believe her testimony, which I do, having heard her, there was people saying, we don't really care about the law. We just want to get this done. It's got to be done with a political fix because we're in an election in Quebec and, uh, you know, it's really important to the prime minister's re-election. It's a, it's a very, very disturbing thing. And I, I want you to understand that when I say this, I am not speaking in a partisan way. I know the Liberals would want us to think that. I've been a lawyer for 40 years. I taught law school for, oh, I don't know, a generation. And, and what I saw disturbed me to my core. And, and I wonder if, if what she's basically saying, Murray, and you were there listening to the hours and hours of testimony, is, is basically that, you know, how many times did I have to say no? Did my office have to exactly. say no? Is that what we're talking about exactly. here? Exactly. That's exactly right. You know, what part of no don't you understand? 10 phone calls, 10, 10 meetings with her staff being intimidated. The chief, the, the, the disturbing part that she indicated was that the clerk of the Privy Council, the independent apex of our a public service appears to have been trying to uh, cajole her. Indeed, she felt threat, veiled threats, as she put it, three times in one day. I mean, enough is enough. She did her job. Thank goodness she did her job. Thank goodness she didn't knuckle under to this browbeating that she was experiencing. Uh, and and give, I give her full marks for candor and courage, let's face it. But we still don't know. And I went up in the Justice Committee uh, yesterday, as you may have heard at the end of the proceedings, that long day, and I said, hey, you let her speak about things up to when you removed her, Mr. Prime Minister, from the uh, Attorney General role. But since that time, she resigned from Cabinet. Jerry Butts has letter of, let, uh, sent a letter of resignation referring to her. Let's have that on the public record as well. And you know what? The Liberal majority on the committee said, no, we're not going to ask even for that to happen. So I went in the House of Commons today and I asked again. Didn't get anywhere. I understand that Mr. Butts does want to appear now, Murray. What does that say to you? It says he's obviously uh, got some splaining to do, as they say. And I hope that we have a, a very thorough uh, opportunity, an opportunity to very thoroughly put to him the issues that arose out of uh, Jody Wilson-Raybo's testimony. Uh, I'm looking forward to that. I, I trust he'll be called. I trust he'll uh, testify under oath. And we need to have a lot of other people. There were 11 people that were referenced by Jody Wilson-Raybo. Uh, I obviously am a little concerned about the Justice Committee. I'm proud to be the vice chair of it, Todd. But like I say, we tried to get them to do the right thing yesterday, just to ask that she could be liberated to talk about the later part of this uh, adventure. No such luck. And so we'll see whether they today, uh, the committee's meeting, we'll see whether they're prepared to let other people testify. Because if they don't, we need a full public inquiry. How can anybody deny that now? 
Something else, too. We, we spoke to Andrew Shear moments ago, uh, Marie, and I want to pose the same question to you that I asked him, which was the level of detail that Jody Wilson-Raybould had in all of her notes. There were times and dates and quotes and, and on and on it went, mm -hmm. and the names of people as well, and that's very important, these 11 people. She even said that the prime minister looked at her at one point and, and said, you know, I'm a Quebec MP, you know, and an SNC Lavalin is, right. is a big jobs generator in Quebec and, and, and all of that sort of thing. What does that say to you as, as, as a longtime lawyer and somebody who is the co-chair of this committee? Well, first of all, you're right. She had copious notes, she had texts, she had emails, and she said she would endeavor to provide them to the committee so we can confirm that what she said was right there in black and white. Um, I, I don't know if you watched it as closely as I did. I was right there, and I'm sure many of your listeners were watching it as well. I believed her, and that's the first thing I said to her. I believe you. So if people are going to now start throwing her under the bus, I, I'm looking for a lot more uh, negative stuff coming out that the Liberals will try to throw in, uh, throw in the way to monkey wrench this whole thing. I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. But, you know, let's let them speak under oath and see if Canadians believe her side of the story or the political uh, spin doctor's side of the story. I honestly hope we get to the bottom of this for Canadians because they deserve answers. We all do. You, of course, uh, are uh, certainly one of the big people who has been spearheading this and, and have been on the Justice Committee for a long time, representing your riding of Victoria. And I'm also hearing, Murray, if I can ask you about this, that you will not be running for re-election in October of, of 2019. It's time for you to yeah. uh, move on to other things. <laughs> That's right. It, and they're completely unrelated, I assure you, Todd. It's nothing to do with anything except stage of life I'm at and uh, desire to get some uh, a new voice for Victoria in the House of Commons. So uh, let me ask you this. How do you think it's going to play out now over the next six months? I mean, you will still be a sitting MP for the NDP Absolutely. now between I'll now and then. You bet I will. I'm going to be there till at least October. We're going to continue to ask tonight. There's an emergency debate. We're hoping that we can get the Justice Committee reconvened just as soon as we can. That's what the Prime Minister says, after all. It's the Justice Committee that's got to do this work. No need for a public inquiry. So let's do that. Let's see if we can, how far we can go with that. See how much the Liberal majority in that committee are prepared to allow Canadians to learn the truth. It, this story is complicated and it's convoluted, and I've said that to a lot of our guests, most of whom have agreed with me. You are a lawyer, so perhaps you can appreciate some of the ins and outs, but I wonder whether you think, uh, Murray, this is resonating with people who are trying to follow it here across the country. You know, it's not the housing crisis, it's not climate change, but once in a while in the life of a parliament, people get to understand the rules of our democracy, and we need to always stand strong when we see challenges to things like the rule of law. Like, I don't think about it every day. I bet you you don't, Todd. But once in a while, we have to be reminded, as Canadians, that we don't and cannot take these things for granted. When an independent, final decision-maker in the law is told what to do, allegedly, by political people, that is wrong. That cannot happen in our democracy. We've got to stand up against it, and we're going to do all we can to find out if that's what happened. Murray Rankin is the NDP's justice critic, longtime MP from Victoria, announcing, of course, he will not rerun uh, in the next election. First of all, thank you for this. Secondly of all, we salute all of your work in public service, Murray, for a long time to this country, and we appreciate you making time today on what is a busy day to get to our studios there in Ottawa and come on the program. All right, thank you very much for those kind remarks. Thank you, Todd.